Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about hypothyroidism and whether or not it can be cured permanently. And if you're looking for a quick answer, the quick answer is maybe, another answer would be sometimes, and another answer would be it kind of depends on what the cause of your hypothyroidism is, uh, because there's lots of different causes of hypothyroidism and not all conditions that cause hypothyroidism are treated the same way or can even be cured. And so that's sort of the short answer to this, but I want to dive into this a little bit deeper um, to give you an idea as to whether or not the type of hypothyroidism that you have can be treated or cured. Um, so let's talk about that. First, I want to differentiate the difference between cure and treatment. So when I refer to being cured in this uh, kind of sort of context here, what I mean is that you have a condition, in this case hypothyroidism, and then you apply some therapy. So this might be diet, supplements, exercise, whatever. It could be whatever therapies you decide to do. And as a result of those therapies, your body returns to normal thyroid function, and you are not relying upon those therapies or medication to get you back to whatever 100% is for you. So that's the definition of a cure. Um, and some types of hypothyroidism are curable, and some are not. Um, but what about treatment? What do I mean by treatment? Well, treatment just means that um, we have the same condition, hypothyroidism, and we're applying some sort of therapy to it. So in this case, usually it's like high, it's like thyroid medication, but it could be all the other things we talked about as well. In fact, that's usually the smartest way to do it. But as you apply those therapies to um, your hypothyroidism, the result is that you approximate n whatever normalcy is for you. So you're feeling better on the treatment, but if you were to withdraw the treatment, you would start to feel crummy again. So all forms of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism are treatable. No question. They're all treatable, but not all of them are curable. So just understand the difference between those two things as we talk about this. And I'm going to go over four causes of hypothyroidism um, and talk about whether or not they're treatable and kind of how difficult they are to treat um, if they are treatable. Uh, there are more causes than this, but these are just sort of the most common. So there's a very high chance, a high probability that you fall into one of these categories. So the first category is hypothyroidism caused from Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And this Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the most common cause of hypothyroidism. Okay, so don't get confused by that. Hashimoto's causes hypothyroidism, and of all the causes of hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's occurs mo most frequently um, among those conditions. So if you don't even know why you have hypothyroidism, there's about a 70 to 90 percent chance that it's caused by Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And in this condition, it's an autoimmune disease in which your body attacks your own thyroid gland, and it eventually will destroy it. All right, so that's sort of the progression, and the progression of this is, is important because in the beginning, Hashimoto's is very, well, I wouldn't say very treatable, but it's definitely treatable. Um, and the earlier you catch it and the earlier you treat it, the better. But if you wait too long, let's say five, 10 years, at that point, the damage from the autoimmune disease may be permanent. So two people could have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but depending on how long they each have it, depends on how treatable it actually is or how curable it actually is. Um, so a cure, a cure in this sense would be defined as a complete uh, remission or reduction in antibodies, which would approximate normal. And there are many, there are many cases. I would say, can you cure, cure it or put into remission? Absolutely. Um, but in terms of how consistently you can do that with each person, that's what varies. Uh, I would say it's much more common that the treatments that you apply to Hashimoto's, so that, like I said, diet, supplements, um, lifestyle changes, stress reduction, etc., they will result in an improvement in the base sort of symptoms, especially the antibodies, but may not completely eliminate them. So that's more common than, than say, applying those same therapies to somebody else and completely reducing or normalizing the antibodies back to zero. Um, but the good news is, out of all of the conditions we're going to be talking about, this is probably one of the most uh, potentially curable um, options. So that's Hashimoto's. The second one is hypothyroidism from nutrient deficiencies. Now, this is the most curable form of, of hypothyroidism because in this condition, your hypothyroidism stems from a reduction in certain nutrients and vitamins. And the, the good news is you can just take those vitamins and nutrients that you are deficient in and it will completely reverse the situation. Now, the most common, uh, this, this is, doesn't occur nearly as frequently as Hashimoto's simply because you know, vitamins and, and minerals and things like that, they're in a lot of different foods and a lot of people are taking nutrients and supplements anyway. So there's a relatively high chance that you're getting proper nutrients. So if you have hypothyroidism, it may or may not be due to this. Um, but there are some people who still, for a variety of reasons, are deficient in certain nutrients. The most common and sort of the prototypical example is iodine deficiency. So if you just simply don't have enough iodine, your body's not able to produce thyroid hormone. You go into a state of hypothyroidism, your thyroid enlarges, you get a goiter, and then that can be felt on exam where you can see it in your neck as it bulges out. 
Now the treatment is you just take iodine and it will completely reverse that that reverse that problem. But there are other ways that you can all other deficiencies you can also have, um, which will impact thyroid function, and those include zinc deficiency, selenium deficiency, tyrosine deficiency, and so on. Um, and a, the reason for a lot of these deficiencies has to do with soil depletion of nutrients and then also the fact that people just aren't eating as much whole foods as they used to. And so when you combine those two things together, there's actually a relatively decent chance that you are not getting sufficient nutrients. The good news is if you feel that you fall into this category or you aren't sure, uh, it's it's pretty safe to just take those so sort of vitamins and nutrients. And if there's any excess, the ones I've listed here, your body will just pee them right out and it's not going to be any harm. It won't harm you in, in any way. Now, iodine, you can harm yourself if you take way, way, way too much. Um, but I have articles and information on how much is enough and, and things like that. So um, if, you, if you're curious about using iodine, I would recommend you check out some of those resources before you just jump in just to be safe. Okay, so that's the second thing, and I would say definitely curable if your hypothyroidism is due to nutrient deficiencies. You just take the nutrient you need, boom, 100% cured. Okay, so number three is hypothyroidism from pituitary or hypothalamic damage. So remember, there's a system uh, which in which your body communicates to other organs and tissues to produce thyroid hormone, and your thyroid gland is just basically the third step in that process. So your brain must talk to your thyroid gland in order to get it to produce thyroid hormone, but your thyroid gland can be perfectly capable of functioning because let's say it's, it's there's no damage to the thyroid gland itself, but sometimes you can have problems with your brain, which means that the brain is not sending the signal to the thyroid gland. And that usually is from trauma. It could be from other conditions such as PTSD and um, medications and all sorts of other things can cause the brain issue. Um, now, the our topic here is whether or not that's curable. And this is a tougher one to treat, as you can imagine. Now, part of the reason has to do with the number of reasons that could cause the issue to begin with, but also from the standpoint that brain tissue doesn't regenerate as well as other tissues um, and cells in your body. Now, th there is a, you know, cell neurogenesis, but it's, it's very, very slow and it can take a long time. So if there's any sort of damage or trauma to the brain, it's, it, if you can heal, it depends on the extent of that trauma and how quickly your body can or if it is able to regenerate that. If it's from some of the other things we talked about such as PTSD or, or medications, well then yeah, you can you can reverse those, right? Because you can treat PTSD and you can also stop taking or, or change the medications you're using which are influencing your brain. Um, but I will say of the three that we've talked about so far, this one is definitely uh, iffy and it's more difficult to treat, um, especially if you have the hypothalamic um, portion because we just don't have therapies that are as targeted towards uh, those tissues as we do compared to, let's say, if your thyroid isn't working as well. And the last one we're going to talk about is hypothyroidism caused by thyroid removal, radioactive iodine ablation, or if you just were born without a thyroid. So if these are not curable. 100% not curable. If you have thyroid cancer and your, a, a surgeon removes your thyroid gland, there is nothing that you can do to cure that um, condition because the thyroid gland is removed and it, you, you're, that's the only source that your body has of producing thyroid hormone. So once it's removed, you can't get it anywhere else unless you take thyroid medication, which means you'll have to take it. So it's definitely treatable, but not curable. The same thing is true as if you take radioactive iodine. If you do that, it concentrates in your gland and it destroys your thyroid gland. It's non-functional. Um, at that point. And then, of course, if you're not born without a thyroid, well, then there's just no thyroid there to function. Now, you might hear stories about people going off medication if they don't have a thyroid gland and all those things. Um, I would caution, uh, I, I, I wouldn't take those all of those um, stories, anecdotal stories, seriously. Uh, you might, because it can potentially cause a lot of harm if you stop taking your medication, especially if you've had your thyroid removed. So just be cautious when you when you hear those things and when you consider what to do. Now, in the future, there may be a therapy, but the only way to fix this problem would be as if we could completely give you some stem cells or something like that or regenerate the thyroid, then place it back in you. Um, so that we don't have that technology yet, but it could be uh, coming in the future. It just depends. Now, the distant future, I have no idea. This could be decades away or even farther. It just sort of depends. But remember, if you had your thyroid removed or completely damaged from RAI or if you weren't born with that one, that is a treatable condition, but not a curable condition. Okay, so those were the four main that I wanted to talk about. And then I also have some information here on um, diet tips that you can use, supplements that you can take, and exercise, and sort of how to do all that stuff. So you can check all that out on, on the blog post if you want some further information. Um, but that's all the information I have for you guys as to whether or not hypothyroidism can be cured permanently. So if you have any questions, especially if your flavor of hypothyroidism can be cured or even treated, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer those questions as soon as I get to them. Um, and otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.